Hey everybody, welcome back to the Armed Pig. Today we're going to show you how to exchange the FEP film or FEP film on a VAT for a Mars 2 Pro. Uh, I sprung a small leak, so it was time to change mine. After a couple felled prints that kind of did the damage. Here I'm just taking out uh, the last of the main screws that hold the film frame into the VAT. Simply pop it out. Do you want to be too careful with the VAT film or the FEP film because we're replacing this one? Now, the new one, obviously, you're going to be good with, but hey, look, there's 30 something more screws almost. <sighs> it's a tedious task, but this one takes a slightly smaller driver that should have came with one of your orders. And just take your time, go through and remove them all. I usually keep mine in the cup. Sometimes they get stuck like this. And then I usually just take another one of the Allen keys, Allen wrenches, tap it off like that. And then I move on to the next one. I replaced this a few times, so a couple of my screws were stripped, but I had to go up to, I think it was a two millimeter Allen key that I had in my personal tools. So I got all those off. Now you just lift the top part of the frame off and then out comes the FEP film. Yep, it's had a rough go, but you can see where all the holes were punched through previously. When you get these sheets, they are simply just solid sheets of FEP. And so now we're going to do some cleanup because I pulled this right after my last held print. Isopropyl alcohol to the to the rescue there as usual. Makes for a good cleaner for, for liquid resin like this. Get everything a good wipe down. You can see I got my work towel down, but then I'm going to use a different towel, obviously, um, to go ahead and remove the alcohol and the resin. Once I'm done, I'll set it to the side to let it finish air drying. And that does a, it's a pretty quick job to actually get this done. Now for the frame, I've already sprayed this down. I'll put an Allen wrench in there into this, uh, the towel to kind of help get it in there because my fingers are too big. Get the initial wipe down done. And then I spray the rest of it, glue the inside of the vat there, add some leftover resin, get that all removed, get it cleaned up and let it air dry. Now through the magic of camera, here in a second you're going to see I'm going to switch kind of scenes here. But because I've got alcohol, I've got resin on these gloves, and we're going to be handling new FEP film. Um, you need to replace your gloves or, or clean gloves. Even if it's resin free, I've always worn gloves just to keep extra fingerprints and my oils from getting onto the new FEP. Right here I'm just finishing up the clean process. Nope, new gloves like I said, clean work surface. I put this little foam pad down to hold the FEP off the ground, and uh, it's something I've seen in a lot of other videos. This is actually just a chunk of foam that was in one of my boxes where either I bought extra vats or extra print heads, and I cut it out to fit. It does a job, keeps it nice and safe, keeps it from getting scratched on the surface, whatnot. And so you start, oh yeah, so I use the FEP 2.0 release liner by Elegoo. And I'll just hit the camera there. It's by Elegoo. We'll try that again. And it's a FEP 2.0 release film liner for the LMR. It says Mars 3, but it works just fine on the Mars 2. But it does fit that bigger size. Amazon said this fit, said this fit my Mars 2 Pro. So I got it. Had really great reviews. Comes in a nice sturdy little book keeper there. Comes with five sheets. I've used two or three, including this one that I've already pulled out. So what you do, that's the part that screws into the actual top of the vat. So what we have to do is we have to flip that over, lay that down first. Again, that's the, the bottom bottom. And then we'll put the FEP down. And then we'll put the top on to the FEP and get it all lined up. Then we'll start screwing in the screws. But you can kind of tell that this is the right side for the, the multiple, the majority uh, the screws going on this side and all those screw holes are going to have little um, angled indents to help you figure out which side goes where. Same for the other one. So here's the new FIP film. It's got a liner on each side you have to pull off and it loves to stick to your gloves. That little thin sheet right there will stick to your gloves. You can't hear it here but I'm shaking my hand violently trying to get it off. And then on the other side I'm going to be butter fingers here because it's hard to do anything in gloves. You lose a lot of dexterity. And I'm going to try the other side. And eventually I will get this thing pulled off. 
Maybe. 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 There it is. All right. Make sure you discard the right piece and keep the FEP film, <laughs> not the liners. The liners won't work for this. So try to line it up decently. You're going to have overhang, and that's okay. We'll get to that at the end of the video. But you kind of put it on the foam over there. Set it down nice, gentle. Shh, it's going to be okay. And you take your top part here, and you press it over the top. Carefully, because you don't want to puncture anything, obviously. This is where you got to go. You got to go smooth and steady and slow while you're doing this. So you do not puncture this brand new fat film, especially once you get close to screwing it in. So line up the holes and then uh, you're going to start uh, with the, the small ones again. You are going to get your screws, or I guess your screws ready. I like to pre-leave these ones or pre-fix these ones. And I almost pierced it there because I'm butter fingers. Very carefully you see me lifting it off the FEP. But this one you see that little indent at the end of the, of the driver there. I think it's designed for this kind of stuff. And I just kind of pick a random screw hole. Usually it's a corner, like that one right there it looks like. And carefully push down and start screwing in. It'll pierce the, uh, the liner, shouldn't have a problem. If it doesn't just from your, the screwing motions, all you gotta do is put a little bit of pressure, just be careful. You can see it's not quite lined up. I've, this is the second screw, the cross screw, directly diagonal from the first one I set. And that one just goes in. And now you're pretty much lined up everywhere. Um, you'll go around, you'll notice that it's kind of poofed up and it's loose. Don't worry, it's designed to be like this. You gotta have that extra slack because once you start screwing this down into the vat frame, it's gonna pull it down around the lip of the, fat, the vat frame, the fat frame, whatever the vat frame and it's going to pull it extra tight so this is probably the most tedious piece of maintenance you have to do in my opinion this is worse than having to clean out the vat after a, a felt print or you're storing your stuff for you know you're not going to be printing for a while but anyway you go through here and you get everything nice and tight i usually try to do opposing screws from one another and not just left to right or right to left or however you want to do it now when you're done, you bring the, the actual vat frame in, and now you're going to flip it over. You can see the lip there, you're going to line it up, but you're still going to be a little bit careful. All the pressure is going to come from the screws here. Now these are the larger screws, they take the larger Allen key head, they're not the gigantic sized ones that take for the print head or anything like that. But I try to prefix, prefix these screws, everything's lined up, you got to use a little bit of pressure to pierce. But then they go right in. And what I do here is I just start by getting them in where they're just barely grabbing onto it and they're not putting a lot of pressure on it. I get all my screws set that way. And then um, I'll go, go around and start tightening them down in a sequence where hopefully it's kind of even. And here in a second I'll probably tap this to show you that it's still loose. Oh yeah, see? Still loose, shouldn't flex like that. But we're about to fix that problem by doing all the tightening exercises or... Is it an exercise? I don't know. We're just going to tighten the screws here. Try to do it evenly. You can tell right now it's already pressed down over that lip. That's great. And here in a second, you're going to see exactly how snug this thing gets. Waterproof, essentially. Obviously, it's resin proof. And we should be just about done here. That should be my last one that I'm tightening up. If I could keep the dang Allen wrench in the screw socket. But we tighten all the way down, and now there's only one more thing to do. Ooh, tippy tap. Yeah, that was nice and toy like a toyger. Anyway, uh, very carefully here, please. I usually start by cutting the excess uh, corners there, so I can have a little bit more less rigidity, I guess, to uh, flex everything. Keep your fingertips out of the way. Then I usually grab one corner, put the knife down along the edge. And slow and steady wins the race like it usually does. Right along the line there, up against the metal part of the vat. And there you go. And now here I am getting the last little bits off. You can see the pick there. I was trying to pick this little corner. I don't want it to drag on the screen or anything. And I'm going to lift it up here in a second. You'll see that there's already some stuff on it. But I clean it with isopropyl alcohol uh, real quick before I put it back into service. 
And as I'm recording this right now, it's actually printing out a part for me for making dice molds. And it's held up to two or three prints so far. So I must have done something right. Guys, thanks again and gals uh, for watching me. Please, if you haven't, smash that subscribe button. I'm going to have more videos like this, more of my making dice videos and 3D printing and maybe some painting here pretty soon. And thanks again. Until next time, we'll see you later.